Right, so Night Elf is the race we've got. Now, how would you rush with Night Elf? I'm not even sure how that's possible other than waiting to level up to, like, level 3 and then have an impact. Uh... It's not gonna work. <laughs> how do you rush? How do you rush his Night Elf? Keeper of the Grove... Most likely, I would think. So, with treants and some archers. This is a difficult map because the bases are so close to one another, so it's going to be like one versus two minimum. Huntresses? Kind of. But I think I can get more done with archers because I need to start leveling ASAP, like I say, to hit the level three marker so I can have more impact on the initial rush. If I literally just go straight to the enemy, with a Keeper of the Grove and one Archer, I'm going to do basically nothing. Even with a Keeper of the Grove level 3 and several Archers, it's not going to be the biggest impact, but we're going to see how it works. I think, honestly, your best bet of rushing is really just rush the Hippo Riders, if that's going to be the quotation mark of what a rush is, but I don't think that's what the request was for. I think the request was for to push into an enemy base, but it settles better on a map where the enemy can't protect each other so easily. But yes, your best bet with Night Elf is always just to rush the Hippo Riders. Don't rush the Chimeras, that's that's what the noobs do. You rush the Hippo Riders, Hippo Riders are way better. They give you so much more control. Versatile, can attack so many creeps. There's no limit. Chimeras can't hit Rock Golems and stuff like that, for example. And there's lots of Rock Golems in these maps. Up he goes. Who dares? So ideally we get all the experience in doing this if we can. Focus down the sorcerer, he's the most annoying. Probably the easiest to kill as well, to be honest. Because these guys have evasion. Don't let the engine of war get the last hit if you can help it. That rejuvenation is doing some wonders for the sorcerer, but a few more treants will say no to that. Eat again with the tree. Ring of protection is trash. We don't really want that, but I suppose it means we have more longevity when pushing. Tech up. Get a bunch of moon wells if you can. And then more archers. Obviously, I can get neutral units as well. Because I've got access to that. Mercenary camp. Depends if there's anything I really want from there. Otherwise, more archers for the gold that I can spend. We're going to pull these back. No need to fight them exactly where they're standing. Give us the power of ranged. Now, let's see. Tusca heal is not too bad, to be honest. It really isn't, but I want as much sort of DPS as possible to sort of nuke units down more easily. I'll get some treants when I get rid of that guy. Stand in ready, boys. You don't want to get him purged, that's why. I'm going to pull this shop over. Not the easiest thing to creep right now, but... Don't always have too much of an option. So we pull the archer down. Those creeps do what they do. Then we attack. And we use like one archer or one tree to block them. As they try to go back to get as many hits as possible with our range units. Make it as clunky as possible. That way you're only really fighting half the army, if that. And then this tree should aggro the next bunch. There you go. Because he's close enough to get the aggro. Make sure there's always a mob for them to aggro onto. If that guy dies, they'll just run back. Finish off the weak mobs. And then we'll get big boy. I'm going to go for damage on the archers. I'm going to go for a neutral hero. So yeah, I did say like rush. But like I say, I don't think it's necessary exactly what you can do. Go back, heal, 
I'm going to get level 3 force of nature. There should be enough moon juice for me to do that. Send those treants up into the enemy base. We're going to go get neutral hero from their territory. So that's going to be our rush in quotation marks. Come on, girls. Get out of his way. So you see we've got plenty of moon juice used up. More treants. If you really want to, you can just do one more. Send those up. Drop. Circle it. Archer, get out of the way. And now... Panda. Panda's so good. He's such a strong hero. Now you see these treants, they can initialize the attack. We're going to get improved bows and we're just going to attack up again because you can do a sort of similar thing. Okay, so we've got an expansion to fight. Oh, hello. Okay. We're rushing into the enemy. Good fight here, to be honest. Lots to kill. Unfortunately, I got my Keep of the Grove surrounded. I didn't see that. Maybe I can get out. Oh, the heals are sick, though. That really helps. Okay, let's go. We can actually just probably rush and finish the game now. So that can be your rush, necessarily. I'm going to go for the Fission, because we've still got night time. I'm going to get a bear for Roar, so that's more DPS on the archers. This is kind of as rushy as a, you can get as a night elf. Other than like specifically going to your opponent with three farseers with wolves and your keeper of the grove. What's better, gyros or guards? Gyros. Gyros are god tier. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't see any of my allies here. Apart from the paladin, but that's okay. I'm going to have to kill the wolves. Get there and out of the way. Pull back a bit. And then go again. Right, kill the wolves again. Panda dead, maybe. As soon as the wolves get summoned, you need to get rid of them. Because it'll be a while before they can come back again. Keep of the Grove can tank some hits. That's fine. Okay, he's coming back for Treants. Chuck those into the enemy line. More archers. Finish that guy off. Okay, keep the push on the top left. Bear comes in. Maybe get Rejuve after that as well. Archers. Get the upgrade on deeps. Really good heals. So marksmanship on the archers. You're just basically pushing damage, damage, damage. Can entangle units, but I want more mana for a force of nature, ideally, so it bolsters our army and keeps us sort of sitting here and fighting. So that the treants are just kind of follow. You can focus the blade master while he's exposed like this. Maybe do an entangle at the last moment. Just to see if you've got a good chance to get the kill like that. Uh, Drunken Haze is great, but I tend to go with Drunken Brawler because at this point I've got no mana left anyway for Drunken Haze. Keep the Grove can easily focus down that hero. Pay attention to heroes. Obviously Panda's next on the line to get focus. Any damage you can do to the Death Knight is going to be focused, worth it. Because he's got enough mana to keep healing. Bear is coming in. I'm going to go for the Roar. Pull back some of the squishier units. Might have to back now. Looks like our forces have definitely diminished. So I'm going to, yeah, back for now. That death might get way too cocky there. So don't forget you can always just keep running back and then reposition. Sorry, bear. I shouldn't have let you die there. I'd rather get a heal on my panda so he can keep being aggressive. Or Wow, that's a long hex, isn't it? That last rage Hex <laughs> doesn't go away.
Okay, I really should just back off now. Keeping the good fight going. Oh, my ear is going. More damage on the archers. More treants to bolster the forces. Coming in for the raw. Ideally wait for level 3 on the panda before doing breath of fires anymore. Just so it'll have a lot more impact. But that might be a bit too long to wait in this scenario. So it might be better just doing at least one breath of fire as we go. Really good heals. Sorry, Archer. You shouldn't be in there. More moon wells by the looks of it. Gonna come in for another raw soon. Some raw material to work with. Get some pretty good fights out of this actually. There we go, level 3 in the bear panda. So we've got a bit more actual useful things to spend it on. More damage on the archers. Although you can always get moon juice, but I don't think I've used too much moon juice to be honest with you. This is how you push back and forth. The hills have saved so much from Celador. I'm going to stay at 50 food for the moment. Go Death Knight again. He hasn't got a TP. Oh, I think he's prepared to run back enough though, so he's not really applicable there. Hello. Death Knight coming in a bit greedily though, so pay attention to that. We need another roar in a moment. Push past our food cap. I'll put some heals out. He's just coiled the... Um, well, we didn't get impaled there. He coiled... Yeah, we can still do it. Nah, nah, nah. Right, Death Knight now. Okay, he's gone. Move back up to here to support these guys. Have one bear ready for raw amongst this group. Easy pick off on the Shadow Hunter. There's like no chance he's going to live that. Just look for opportunities. Death Knight needs to go to the right, so flank him, stop him. Focus on the Keep of the Grove now, he's down for the count. Just finish off heroes, more experience. And there you go. So. Is that a rush? I don't know, but honestly, I don't know how you can really rush his night elf other than doing some strategy for, like, mass hippo riders. Which is, if you want the short, long and short of it, basically, play normally. So, whatever first hero you want to get, probably best to be a panda, because you'll do way more damage with a panda with Breath of Fire. Level up a panda, ideally, from level fr to level 3, l at least. The reason why I always say level 3 is important because it has so much more of an impact than level 1 spells. So level 3 gives you access to the level 2 spell. And the level 2 spell is way better than a level 1 spell. So every time you're spending that mana, you may as well be spending it on a level 2 
Let's spell them level one. So you don't always want to just blow through all of your mana just because you can. You sometimes need to hold back a bit. It might take a bit longer, but you need to hold back because you've got more mana to play with later on. Uh, you go Archer. So Ancient of War, Archer, Ancient of War, Creep. So you lift up the Ancient of War, creep something, ideally an orange spot, whilst teching up, and then put down the tree, the Ancient, that is, and continue building Archers. You're going to build like four or five of them, and then maybe when you tech up, you put down at least one Ancient of Wind. But if you really want to catch up, you kind of have to put down two Ancients of Winds because Hippos take longer than Archers to build, and you've already got more Archers than Hippos at this point, so you need a head start. Well, you need a way to push the Hippos, so you then start mass-producing Hippos to catch up with the amount of Archers you currently have. And then as you start to get those close enough, then you start producing Archers again to the point where you can then have another two Hippos match the two Archers that are going to build. So by the time you've got that all sort of said and done, you're going to have probably about eight Hippo Riders. And then you can probably take up to Tier 3 if you really want to. Just to get the Marksmanship upgrade. But it's not 100% necessary. You can, Depending on how much resources you have, you can always just keep pushing into Hippo Riders and then just harass your opponent's economies over and over and get lots of easy kills and therefore just keep leveling up your heroes. I would recommend a Goblin Tinker, actually, as a second hero if he's going to do that because I think Panda Breath of Fire, Goblin Tinker with Cluster Rockets... They can just absolutely annihilate enemy economies. Uh, 